Hey guys, this is Full Stuffing Incorporated, and I'm here to give my top five Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's plot holes. And the reason I'm doing this video is because I've seen ones like it, I don't want to give this one a shot. You know, give my five cents on 5D's. <laughs> uh, it's a terrible joke. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start on this list. And before anything, no, I am not including any cards that... I'm not including any cards that are like BS, overpowered, basically a plot armor card. I'm going to do ones that actually are inconsistent to the plot and make the plot inconsistent as a whole. Don't get me wrong. 5Ds is a great show. Not just a great Yu-Gi-Oh! show, but a great anime in general, in my opinion. With that being said, you expect too much of me if you expect me to completely ignore these nuclear bomb-sized plot holes. With that being said, I am going to give my top 5 Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds plot holes video. Okay, I'm not going to go ahead and talk about all of Crash Hound's arc, just because that arc itself didn't make sense. I'm only talking about Callan, or Kiryu in particular, but I'll be calling him Callan in this part, because I'm more accustomed to the dub in this show. With that being said, why did he go into Crash Town? Why in the world did he try to punish other people for what he's done? And what I mean by that? is that he went over to Crash Town and defeated plenty of duelists over there to send them all to the mines for the rest of their life. I wonder why he did that in the first place. He is punishing a lot more than himself here. And also, with all of this happening for quite a while, they said, why didn't those guys end up killing Callan? Why didn't they get rid of him while he was still a big threat? They had guns. They had dynamites. They had whips, for God's sake. And this is all in the dub, too! And how did Callan and Yusei survive that fall off the cliff? Both in the dub and the sub. This is not explained. Like, they pretty much come out without a scratch on them, but much less serious injuries. I mean, forbid the time that protagonists can actually get injured. It's so, so stupid. I am sorry, but it's dumb. Callan himself is a huge inconsistency in the show, not only by actual physics, but also by the story itself. The people in Crash Town are complete idiots. They don't even acknowledge that they can kill the biggest threat across the street from them. This is uh, freaking heck, man. This is a noise seemingly innocuous one with Dvac or Demok, whatever you want to call him. Anyway, this guy makes no sense. The fact that he became a Dark Signer. Was he always a Dark Signer? Was he an emissary for the Earthbound Immortals? They don't explain that. They just say, this guy is Ancient Fairy Dragon and Luna has to beat this guy to get Ancient Fairy Dragon back. This guy's a deck full of monkeys for pretty much no reason. I know, that was a pretty minor one. But still, he comes out of the blue holding Ancient Fairy Dragon. I know, they explain how Roger got Ancient Fairy Dragon. But why would he give it to Dvac of all people? Considering that he lost to Leo? To freaking Leo! I am sorry. I know. Luna came out in the middle of the match to come and help this dude. But he didn't need the help. He knew what to do. In fact, Luna admitted herself that Leo was better. Rua, Ruka, whatever you want to call him. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just get off of this one because... Ugh, just... D-Mag himself makes no sense, and the rest can just fill itself out. No one is complete without any main creature coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about Lifestream Dragon. This thing makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, to think that something so important comes in so late in the series. This is the, the original 5th Cyber Dragon. Keep that in mind. It's the original 5th Cyber Dragon. Yet in the match against Dvac, or Demok, Leo nearing the brink of death at the hands of the Earthbound Immortal and this egomaniac, Dvac, and this thing didn't even think to come to his aid. Like, all of this makes no sense. I am sorry, but realistically... Where in the world was this thing at? Was it at a bar or something? Oh yeah, it was Power Tool Dragon. Why did it turn to a giant metallic dragon in the first place? Why did it turn to Power Tool Dragon? Wouldn't it have been more powerful as Lifestream Dragon? 
probably would have been easier to summon in Morphronics if that thing was a level 7, but no, it's a level 8 for no reason. Okay, aside from that, this thing doesn't even come with 8. Instead, Luna or Ruka comes down and helps this dude, helps him win the match even though Leo didn't need it. He did not need it at all. Like, no matter what happens, he was going to win that match anyway, just because he didn't switch decks or anything. It was all pretty much Leo from here. It made Leo look weak in comparison to his sister. And his sister sucks! And also, in the Ark Cradle, he just comes completely out of nowhere. Pretty much means it's way too late, considering that the Ark Cradle is the last arc in the show. It wasn't already to be seen in Season 2. In fact, Black Wing Dragon pretty much replaced it in every way. And, you know... Crow being a signer. Black Wing Dragon being a signer. They had to shoot you on that six signer dragon thing anyway, just so Life Dream Dragon wouldn't look like it's just floating around, just having no purpose. But it served no purpose anyway, so yeah, great job, team. And speaking of signers that shouldn't have been signers. Why in the world is Crow a signer? Why? Like, it makes no sense. All of this, like, Crow became a signer in that match against Godwin. Why in the world was he a signer? Like, it doesn't make sense. He didn't have a known dragon. None of those dragons were ever with Crow. In fact, Blackwing Dragon wasn't even in the war in the first arc. And realistically, who would have thought that a dragon that looks completely like Power Tool Dragon would belong to Crow of all people. And also, he does nothing with it. Nothing out of the ordinary out of the actual signers. Yuse does excel synchro, Akiza has powers, Jack has Red Nova Dragon. What does Crow have? What does he have? It makes no sense. At least Luna can go to the spirit world and Leo has an upgraded version of a monster for it. What does Blackwing Dragon and Crow have? It makes no sense. They just wanted to make Crow a signer just so they can make him feel more relevant. He would have been better as a side character, as a comic relief per se, not make him a comic relief main protagonist monster. So yeah, Crow being a signer makes no sense. In fact, he was supposed to be a dark signer in the first place. But, you know, Crow is way too popular and Black was way too popular. Let's make him a signer. Ugh. Freaking heck, man. <laughs> You know, when I first heard about this kind of thing, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that something like this could ever exist. I, when I first heard about it, I was thinking to myself, did they really have to do this? Did they really have to shoehorn something in this ridiculous? And the answer, I feel like, should have been no, but it was a yes instead. And that honor goes to Black Winged Dragon. This thing makes no sense, like, whatsoever. Even in its debut episode, it made no sense. I will go ahead and explain it. This thing was a card for Robert Pearson. He held the card, played the card on countless occasions. In fact, and that's the same duel that he met Crow and the kids. But in this episode, we don't see a signer mark on Robert Pearson. And this is a signer dragon. So how in the world is Robert Pearson not a signer? How did he not have the birthmark? How did he not just noticed something special about it rather than just it being an ace card and also why would he place that card in the door runner of all places why would he place that inside a freaking motorcycle engine wouldn't that bend the card wouldn't any kind of crash or mess up just completely destroy it the placement makes no sense and also the fact that it came on crow and also became a cider dragon what? Like, where did this thing come from? It was nowhere to be seen in Season 1. It was just randomly thrown in for some reason, just so we have a fifth Simer Diner Dragon. And we've already had one in Livestream Dragon. And how Crow got it out of the Dual Runner in the first place makes no sense. I mean, did he open a compartment? Did he just randomly have the card appear outside of his Dual Runner into his hand? I didn't know cards can use instant transmission. But still... The fact that this thing was randomly shoehorned in to be a fist signer dragon until Livestream Dragon got a name and effect, like, what? Like, adding this thing as a signer dragon made no sense. 
they had to accommodate the crow being a signer. But even then, the legend itself, the clips themselves show five signer dragons. But instead of saying there's a sixth one, it makes no sense. Was Blackwing Dragon at a bar or something? Was it just pissed drunk, just seeing a war outside, just like, hey, I, I better go out there. Uh, 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 oh, better not. Uh. It makes no sense. Like, the fact that Blackwing Dragon was thrown in the pot for no reason, easily the worst signer dragon, nothing special about it. Heck, the effect of it so special was to look at Livestream Dragon, which can actually give you life points. And it gains effect damage. And it weakens itself. Okay. The card itself. The monster. Everything about this card makes no sense. Nothing about it ever came to mind to these people as a plot hole. This is probably the biggest one to show. Maybe aside from energy or momentum, going from a source of energy to a source of human evolution... That made no sense either, but this is easily the cream of the crop for Yu-Gi-Oh! plot holes, in my opinion. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys like it, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, join the fight for ARMY, and together we will beat the meta. Talk to you guys next time, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you guys next time. Take care.